Hello there. Sir from 17 once again. This is my Bloodborne, no healing walkthrough. We are entering into Hemwick Channel Lane. We're also going to be taking on the Witches, which are an interesting boss, but we'll discuss them when it's happening because it is quite a long fight. This area here is incredibly dangerous, and it's in dangerous. It's, it's in dangerous? I don't even think that's a word. In dangerous, the new Steven Seagal flick. Um, but it's dangerous for a very good reason. Every single enemy here has insane amounts of frame advantage on certain attacks. Do you know how the hunters in central Yarnum had that one attack that was faster than everything else they did, and when it hit you, you were in trouble? Well, every one of these enemies has the opportunity to do that to you. I'm speaking, of course, of the witches. The other guys, not so much. But the witches, my goodness. They have flurry attacks, they have fast attacks, they have push attacks. They have all kinds of, of just bad things waiting for your, for our hunter to, to have to deal with. So my advice is is to, to bum rush as quick as you can, getting there and go for the jugular. Just go in for the kill. Don't mess around. Once you open up the gate by going the long way, I recommend not even fighting them. Especially the ones who throw the goddamn molotovs. Because this bitch, she's got infinite molotovs and they just come out so quickly. And you don't realise just how annoying it can be until you get to a level later on where she's a real nightmare. But this is a good opportunity to get a plunge attack on, on this particular one with the sickle. And... There is a very interesting nuance to this particular area. If you have over 15 insight, you will encounter creatures known as Mad Ones, and they will warp in with very dramatic looking teleport. It's very easy, that's the one who pushes by the way. A good way of stopping her from pushing you is to roll into her. If you roll into her, she'll flinch instead of you. It is the best way of not getting pushed off the cliff. Terrible, terrible enemy. And be careful here, there's a little ambush with a Molotov about to happen. Because this, god I hate this woman. But, the Mad Ones will randomly spawn in this area. They essentially, they look like some kind of, I don't know, like, grown-up, super-thin, emaciated, crazy Chucky dolls. It's, it's a very strange-looking creature. And it has a knife, and it's, it's pretty dangerous, but for the most, they're not too bad to kill. At this moment in time, I only have four insights, so we don't have to contest with them, but I probably should, just for a good example, have had my insight higher. And as much as they're a threat, because they are classed as a stronger enemy, they have a 25% chance of dropping a gem, and obviously the, the gems they're going to drop are going to be shitty, probably, because they're based around this area, and you're meant to come here quite early, it's never meant to be a late game area. That being said, it's head and shoulders higher than the areas we've already traversed, so the gems that they will drop have a percentage of being something worth wearing at this moment in time. And uh, that was fantastic. <laughs> Because I've done quite a lot of research with this game on how to get the best gems earlier on. Once again, all of this was pre-patch and it was outside of chalices. I do not class chalice dungeons because, to me, that is, is just something completely different. I'm talking about the game. The base game. And the fastest way I found to get gems that were halfway decent was to jump over the Yosefka's Clinic wall, go down into the Forgotten Woods, talk to the person in the hut, get the Tonsil Stone, and then go to the opposite side in Cathedral Ward and get abducted by the amygdala creature. Then once you're in the Nightmare Frontier, you can kill the Winter Lanterns, and you can get some semi-decent um, cursed blood gems from them. But even then, they're not that good. They're nowhere near as good as the ones you can get in the, um, the Mensis Nightmare, but that's literally the end of the game, which makes that super disappointing. But as far as, as that was concerned, that was the earliest I found you could get anything even remotely close to decent. Once again, this might have changed in the coming patch, but I'm not sure. However, the creatures here just might be that intermediary between the Nightmare Frontier and everything else, because 25% is not a bad drop rate in the grand scheme of things. Right there, you saw me roll into her in hopes of interrupting a push. She didn't do it, I got lucky. But also, for this sequence, if you stand behind the fire, if the dog attacks you, it'll kill itself in the fire. Now, this guy takes damage, but he's a little bit more resilient. Once again, though, you are literally one ambush away from dying here, because there's a lot of bad things waiting. So, get the attention of the dog, that's the target here. Interesting, didn't kill it that time. The last time I did this, it attacked me, and because it was stuck in recovery frames, 
it was just in the fire and it died, but it still worked. It, it enables you to, to get some flinch on it and put some damage on it and then move your way across here to kill her. The motivation of what we're doing right now is to get to the shortcut. Doesn't matter if you die, folks. Doesn't really matter how you perform. Just get to that shortcut and you never have to run that gauntlet again. That is the goal. And in this forest coming up, there are two of the hunter guys, the, the big hooded, robed hunter creatures, who are incredibly dangerous, but they do give decent gems if you get lucky. And I say decent once again with a pinch of salt. But hit this checkpoint, and there's probably going to be a transition here, because I died to one of the hunters. Which is always going to happen, because that thing has insane range. I'm talking just straight up crazy range. But what I'm showing here... The first time we came through we killed everything, now I'm going to show you the quick path, which is entirely up to you how you choose to do it, but this is mine. So once we're past all this, as soon as you get to the grating, you're pretty much safe, but just bear in mind there is a harem of, of bitches to your left, and then there are these two hooded nasty executioner guys. I really like this enemy, even though I disagree with his range, I disagree with his speed, and I disagree with the headbutt and the jump attack. Everything else, I'm pretty okay with. And even in spite of the things I disagree with, like that range, I still like him. Because I think he's cool. And I think he should be dangerous. Look at him. He's a giant, fat, hippo executioner man. Who drops, you know, some of the better gems you can get early on. I just think there are certain moves he has that just defy what he should be able to do. But that being said, once you learn him, he telegraphs everything. And you can get some really effective kills on them, which I showcased just then as we max out our blood vials. But pushing up here, I think this is dan more dangerous than those two guys, uh, as you can see. This is where the hunter killed me, he snuck up on me because I thought I could rush past him. There is a group of girls that one throws molotovs and the others try to stun lock you, and altogether it's, it's a circus of just stupidity, and it can go bad really quickly. It can also go good really quickly, depending on if you can get a multi-hit on them, or if you can stop the stupid lady throwing molotovs, because she's the problem. You go to attack one of her friends, you get hit by a molotov, your character flinches, and then you get stun locked to death. That is the real threat. If you can avoid that, you'll be fine. And it's one of those things that's always bugged me in, in these games. The enemies attack through each other, and I've hated it for so long. Like, that was a perfect example. You see what happened? I ran in to try and get rid of her with a running attack. I took a, a Molotov to the face. It, it's just, it's so dangerous. And these two enemies here do not need any encouragement to fuck you up, because they'll do it gladly. But, incredibly dangerous stuff, as witnessed. But once you've killed them, and you push up this little incline, there is going to be a lantern that's going to enable me to reset and then take on the boss with a nice full life. There's also going to be a demon, a scurrying demon, that's going to drop one of the crystal assholes. Once you break that, it drops down, so make sure you clean him up and hopefully you can get some luck. What do we get? That is pretty good. More of the resources we need to power up, I'm always welcoming of it. And then I'm pushing down here. I'm buffing, and I'm apparently taking the boss on with half-life. Get me. So that creature right there is a madman. It is one of the creatures that will happen to be in this area if your insight's high enough. However, I'm looking for the witches. So the witches of Hemwick uh, are the eye collector creature. They just have all these weird eyeballs on them. And there's actually two here. The illusion of this fight is you think you're fighting one and there's actually two. The problem is, when you kill one, the other has an ability to bring it back from death. So the best case scenario in this situation is to injure them both equally. However, you cannot tell um, how much you're injuring one of them because the life bar doesn't turn up until much later on in the fight. But try your best to injure them both equally and then kill them at the same time. And hopefully you do not get gangbanged by the mad man thing with the sickles like I just did then, which is incredibly rare, folks. This is one of those fights where I almost every single time no damage it because I never get into any kind of trouble but the moment you start recording I got hit by that I'll probably get hit by the magic that one of the witches does which is incredibly rare as well and I fought this fight with 99 insight and the witches did less than they did in this fight which like there was the teleport but the teleport looks identical to the AoE so that could have been an attack that could have killed me it's one of those really weird things. That one's covered in blood, which tells me it's the one I've been beating on. 
so I'm looking for the other one. And they teleport generally to the opposite side of the, of the screen. However, they can go up onto the walkways and they can stand on that balcony, so you need to be aware of if she goes up there, which is incredibly rare, but it does happen. Um, I'm having issue here now. I seem to have lost her. I, I completely condone kiting the madmen. I don't think there's a point in really killing them unless there's three or four and they get super aggro, which they can do, so you want to be aware of that. But I have lost her. That's the one we've already been beating on. Where's the other one, goddammit? There she is. So, charge the backstab. There is the visceral attack. And can we get a few hits before she disappears? Yes, we can. There's a few more hits. And is that AoE? No, that's a teleport. So, right now, fight is very passive, very pliable. Nothing much happening. But we're just building her down, building her down. And this is interesting, uh, kind of like contradictions of terms. Building... I suppose you do build downwards, don't you? But I think my first reflection is to build upwards. So there's the first one dead. Oh, and the other one was dead too. So outside of the cluster of attacks I got from that madman, that was a perfect fight because neither of them did magic and neither of them had any opportunity to revive. So hopefully you can dodge the, the crazy flurry and not get put in a bad spot. But if not, you'll take a few hits like I did and the rest is pretty damn simple. So cruise down here before you leave, make sure you pick up the, the workshop tool and then we'll be moving onwards uh, into different areas of the game. So thank you very much for watching, I hope the walkthrough is helping and you take care now.